Hello and welcome to this review of the Epiphone Les Paul Studio in Smokehouse Burst. This one also comes in ebony and alpine white and wine red. Um, it's a very interesting guitar because it represents somewhat of a closing of the gap um, between Epiphone and Gibson. Increasingly the specs and what you get for your money is getting really solid from Epiphone. But it does have a few things to note about it, which I'll get into. Not least of which is the fact that Epiphone reserves the right to change the specifications of these guitars uh, to maintain the quality. So that does mean that this guitar is not quite as they've specified on the website. And that might happen to you too. And I will show you exactly what I mean by that as we get into the review. My first impressions of the guitar, the actual body thickness surprised me a bit. It's actually a fairly thick body, particularly when you compare it to something like an Epiphone Les Paul Special 2, something like that, um, which has got a thinner body. You might, if you're coming from that and you're upgrading, this will seem like a really a, a four fat Gibson. It pretty much is, um, except it obviously doesn't have the binding um, around the body. It doesn't have the binding on the neck. Aside from that, it's starting to feel like a really fully fledged Les Paul. Obviously on this one as well, you do now have the rather nice Kalamazoo headstock, which um, looks a lot better. Um, I've got several Epiphone Les Pauls, which do have the old style headstock with the clipped wing, which um, I've never had a massive problem with, but it doesn't look brilliant. I much prefer this. It looks, this looks really classy. Standard strap button. We've got a body made of mahogany with a maple cap and a plain maple veneer. So um, that does differ obviously to the Gibson, but the Gibson is say 1500 of your best British pounds or about the equivalent in euros and dollars. So it's significantly more expensive than this, which is this guitar is probably in the region of about four to 500 um, pounds. So about the same equivalent in the other currencies I've mentioned. So another cool thing on here is that it does have the lock tone tunematic bridge, which means it has these lovely little clips on here, which means that this is all very secure. It has the Epiphone Classic Pro Buckers. Feelings are always going to be mixed on these. They sound pretty good. They are on the warmer side. I will say that um, three way switch, which works absolutely fine. This feels very solid. In fact, rather good. The scratch plate comes on and off. It looks gorgeous without a scratch plate. It really looks nice. It shows off the, the lovely figuring on there. Um, it has the split coils as well, which works rather nicely. It has a nickel plated metal jack plate there. It has a, a laurel fingerboard. Um, it looks really nice, this one actually. It's got nice figuring on the actual um, fingerboard itself. It has these trapezoid inlays as well which look very nice, the pearl sort of style, bell-shaped studio cover. But what differs on this one to the specifications, as per their website, they say that they're Grover tuners. Now you can see that these are actually Wilkinson. They do work really well though. They're really, really good tuners, actually. Um, they look exactly the same as Grover tuners, but they're not Grover tuners. So there you are. So that's that's part of them changing the, some of their product specs to meet their quality um, and availability of, of the materials. Epiphone quote the nut as being ABS. So they don't claim that it's a graph tech nut or anything spectacular, but ABS is known to be a very hard wearing, durable material. So um, I don't think you're going to have too many issues with this one. But again, it's a, it's a part you could change if you really want to. In terms of the, the neck itself, they call it a slim taper D. This is actually a fairly robust neck. It's certainly by no means really thin feeling. Definitely not. It feels like quite a substantial neck. Fret depth at the first fret is 20.5 millimeters. Fret depth at the 12th fret is 23.9 millimeters. Uh, it does feel like it, it sort of chunks up quite a lot towards the, um, the body end of the neck, which I really like. And it also feels like it has fairly decent shoulders on it, which is probably why it feels possibly thicker 
than it actually is. Um, it definitely, it feels very, very comfortable. It, it, it feels like you've got something really good in your hands to actually do good, strong bends with. I can't, I can't talk highly enough about the feel of the neck. It really does feel very nice indeed. The studio is well known for being a stripped down version of a Les Paul. What that does mean, it doesn't have any binding. That could be seen as a real plus though, depending on what kind of player you are. It does mean that the fretboard is actually, it has a very nice rounded feeling to it. Whereas on a normal Les Paul, where you do have the binding, it has a bit more of an edge to it. So it feels quite nice when you put your thumb over the top um, to actually do big heavy bends. It's something that I actually really like about this guitar. I think so it's a big plus, even though it's actually something which technically is an added extra, which they've not put on. The fret work is really good. I couldn't feel any sharp fret ends and it feels very comfy to play. As well as that, the frets feel pretty level, which means I can get a low action straight out of the box. The guitar has a set neck design, which feels really good. So it pushes it above the Les Paul Special 2, which is much cheaper. And it doesn't have any sort of special access heel or anything, but the normal carve here feels very good. Um, the glossy back doesn't feel too sticky and it feels very nice to play indeed. If I'm being really critical, the screws in the truss rod cover haven't been properly sort of countersunk into the actual cover itself. They're still sort of slightly raised and at a bit of an angle. It's nothing major. It's not going to make a difference to your playing experience. But I'm, you know, I'm struggling to find real negatives with this guitar because I really do like it. So looking in the back of the guitar, it has CTS pots and you can see the split coils there as well. It's fairly cleanly done, although it's not really clear whether it has significant shielding in there or not. I can't say that I've experienced any noise with the guitar, so it, it works actually as it should. Pickup resistance on the bridge pickup is 7.89k ohms, both is 3.85 and the neck is 3.54 and then if we do all in split coil position we've got 3.95, 1.93 and the neck alone is 3.79. Without further ado, we'll get onto the sound demo. I thought it was important to hear the difference between the humbuckers and the split coils on this as well, since it does have that function. So let's hear, first of all, for reference, let's hear the humbucker. So it's got quite a nice full, but still punchy, punchy sound on these, on these pickups. They do sound really good. I really like these pickups, actually. Um, so if I put the bridge pickup on um, on a split chord position, definitely thins out. Back to humbucker. There's a reduction in volume, but it does sound... That's the humbucker. So that's the um, split coil. So it sounds pretty good. I mean, if I put them both... into strat territory there I don't know in this split coils I think they actually sound really really good
So the guitar weighs 3.464 kilograms. So that's basically just under 3.5 kilograms or seven pounds and 10.2 ounces. So for a Les Paul, it's a pretty light guitar really. Overall, I think this is a really solid guitar for the money. Whether you're upgrading from one of the cheaper Epiphones or another guitar, or whether you're somebody who wants a really good working instrument, um, I think this is a highly, highly usable guitar. Um, I think it's an absolutely fantastic piece of kit, to be honest. I think this is absolutely brilliant, this guitar. I really, really like it. Um, definitely one of my favorites. I would say this is a keeper on the channel. So if you like this content, please do like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.